Good morning, Piano Land. Today I've got this nice C7 to look after. It needs a solid tuning, and I'm gonna do some hammer filing and voicing because it's gotten. Yeah, it's gotten really bright. So let's open her up, see how the hammers look. So if we take a look, you can see how beat up these hammers are. The light's pretty strong. Let me turn it down. Over here. Yeah, look at all that deep grooving. This is a concert piano. Um, it gets a lot of professional usage from the players here and also from the uh, concert artists that tour through. Um, it's got a lot of good sounds, but we're going to make it sound sweeter by getting rid of all this deep grooving. So here's our materials. We've got a variety of sandpapers. Uh, everything from 100 down to, I don't know, this feels like like 800, 1,000. Really, really fine. The same thing in single, ham single hammer widths. You can see uh, that's just one hammer. These are roughly three hammers wide. And then the voicing blocks, one for to support the group of hammers, one to hold down the shanks. I'll show you how that works. So when you've got straight hammers, like in this... Uh, first capo section, you can use your block here, one supporting, see there it is, this block holds them down when you're filing from the back, this way, you move it out of the way to file from the front that way, checking constantly on the side for the shape, Let's see if I can show with a better angle. So on these straight hung hammers, unlike the ones in the treble, these are straight, so we can just grab it from here and pull. We definitely want to make sure that we're creating an angle here, flat spots, because as you round over the top, those flat spots create that diamond shape. I don't want super pointy hammers, but there's a lot of material on here to remove, so we're going to make these a little bit flat with some straight pulling. We're going to go all the way down this way and then that way, and then we're going to pull from the front, looking at the side here to make sure that we have the right uh, kind of angle, that it's even, and then as we go down through the papers, we'll pull across the top to round this over here and uh, come up with a nice gentle shape. Cut to the time lapse. All right, at this point, we've got a good fluff up. You can see, let's go from this side. See, I've got a little start there. There's a corner at the top. And I'm using that right there across as a flat line. You can see there's a flat line through there. Oh, camera. There's a flat line across, right across there that fits so that your hand is at an angle but you're still getting that line across the paper to hold it in place. And you can just angle your hand like this to pull the paper, I use the real fine paper, to pull the paper in the right direction. So if I use my first finger, right, the line goes the other way, I'd have to flip my hand. So we use the second and third pull. So I'm gonna keep going back to the time lapse. You can see here there's a ledge. That is the difference between the, the, the layer I filed down to and the layer above it that's still there. We're peeling upward. As we file, we're peeling the layers like, like an onion. And so you can see these very clearly. You don't want to just go ripping through those because the string grooves are below that layer and the top of the hammer will become just a, a terrible mess. Look how that one is if you just go rolling through it. So we're gonna do each side like this, and bring it close to the top to create like a little island that hopefully hits just, just above the bottom of the string grooves. We don't wanna get rid of those. Just go plowing through the top. No, 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 no. We wanna preserve that, the string spacing, the string leveling, but we wanna get just, just so that there's a touch of string groove left, you know, three, four millimeters on the top of the hammer. Um, I can't really show the other side too well. Yeah, you yeah, can't really see it. But we're going to keep going 
until we get what we want at the top and I'll stop again and, and show you that. You can see on these couples, there's a little landing right on the top, right there. And we're gonna gently work our way up to that with the finer paper, it's not the rough stuff. And you can see our shape is coming together. It's very nice. Okay, a little flatter on one side, but I can fix that. So we'll keep going with the fine papers. So if any of the hammers have a little ledge on them, like this guy, see all that little rough in there? We can use our single hammer strip and we can file that out. So let's do that. So the secret to getting this nice and clean on top is actually to use the really heavy paper but use a super light touch. Just the tiniest grazing across the top to get rid of these little dips and uh, bumps and stuff. You can see how clean that one came out. Just the tiniest bit of string groove. No edges or, or uh, little uh, peels or anything like that. And you just used just just no pressure, as Bob Ross would say, no pressure. Just the tiniest bit, and the heavy paper cuts off the top bits without digging too far in, as long as you use just a bit of pressure. A quick comparison. As we come down, boom, you can see right there how much shorter they are, but also how much nicer they look in comparison to the tops. You see the treble ones here in the second capo area don't really have that nice clean look. These three didn't make it onto my hammer plank, so you can see they're still in original condition. Let's see how they sound. So this is the first key with the filed hammer. They don't really sound a whole lot different, but if you compare Here it's like a muffled sound, and that's that extra hammer butt bit uh, getting in the way of the of the hammer really contacting the string cleanly. So uh, yeah, I still have a lot of voicing to do, but a lot of filing. So let's do one and then the other. So for these hammers, you can see even in these top ones, they're angled just a bit, getting to a pretty severe angle over here. Of course, the base is all angled. So we're gonna take these one by one with our little single hammer. Same process from the thickest down to the second to thinnest, and then back to the thickest to clean up the top, and then polish probably with the uh, the wide paper and gang filing for the polish of the top because mostly it's parallel up here. It's not parallel across the sides. And so I get to an angle about like right here with my eyes so I can see the front and the back as I do one by one, making sure that I got a good shape. Um, so let's go to the time lapse and you'll see how it works. Forgot to mention, I usually get to this place where you've got just that tuft of, of the layers left at the top, and then I go to the next hammer um, just to make it easier. 
When you do gang filing, you can kind of go past this point faster, but one by one, if I go all the way, then it's hard to compare the shape hammer to hammer to make sure you have a consistent shape on them. All right, you can see I've got them all to the same place with just a tuft on the top. That's the end of the tall uh, area around the string grooves. You can see this one still has some deep grooves in it. Um, so now we go one by one still, um, taking that off and see what's left, reshaping a bit, getting finer and finer with the papers. Here we go. All right, so I filed through the base. I've turned the action around. This is easy, but also not so easy. Um, and I'm gonna do the shoe shine uh, right across the tops of the hammers where it's parallel here, not on the shoulders, just the tops. So let me show you what that looks like. There we go, look at that. A little fuzzy still, but that'll all come off with some playing. I want you to notice crisp corners. Really crisp corners. Definitely want to keep those corners. You don't want to, you don't want to round these over. There was something I was noticing as I was filing. You can see where the coloring is on the bottom half of the hammer and how it gets very thin towards the shoulders, we'll say, the fattest part. I think they, um, the coloring down there keeps the layers from peeling off a little bit below where the coloring stops. Uh, I don't think it's a strategy in the manufacturing in terms of how the hammer files, but it's certainly a byproduct at the very least. Because even if you wanted to pick up a layer from below the halfway mark, I don't think you could, which means that hammers like these are inherently going to be kind of diamond shaped. Uh, if you know anything about that, comment, let me know. Here's a little taste. Just of after the tuning, no voicing. So hammers have been filed, the tuning has been mostly finished. Here's a taste of the sound. <laughs> So I put these black lines in there, just using some uh, transfer paper. You uh, put the paper over the hammers, slide the action back in, and then you bang the hammers into the paper against the strings, and it puts those lines there. All right, so the first order of business, I'm going to reestablish the shift sound, putting a needle right in between those lines on the left side of them, and then we'll see what we're left with. That'll give me a good indication as to how hard the tops of the hammers are and then how much other needling I'll have to do. I'm going to do a lot in the bass today. The bass sounds bad. So let's get started. All right, that did pretty good. I've got a problem note right here. And for that, it's super loud. I'm going to needle towards the top here in that area, flowing upward. So starting here, ending there, and we're trying to get kind of under the strike surface, so it's going to be radial, almost following the surface of the hammer. I'm trying to dig in there 
maybe five or six on each side, really high, really close to the end of the string grooves, screws without getting too crazy on the top. Hammer can handle it. Here. That worked out pretty well. still but it's not so loud I'll probably do some more of that but then down here yeah still got some work to do all right here's the finished product <laughs> 